Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast, Red Pill Tamales edition. It is a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I'm about to head out to San Antonio. Can't wait. Um, there will be no rust in sight, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm doing a rap show. That's right. You know, I used to be in hip hop, Rob. Well, did you? Yeah, man. So uh, Versace Mariachi is out right now. It's Chingo and Friends, the concert album release party so it's going down san antonio uh this probably will already be up by the time yes. i'm performing on stage but either way you know that's what i have going on and thanks for the support um also thanks to all the patrons that have already signed up that are supporting red pill tamales because a lot of people say chingo i love what you and rob be talking about man you fighting a good fight and you spreading the word and it's a more diverse discussion and you know things like that but you got to put you know some you know you gotta put a little something put some put some respect on on the red pill tamales because otherwise man i'm just on here talking politics to myself uh let me know leave us a review leave us a little comment chime in send us a dm and uh if you're feeling it and you really want to keep it going because this is going to be episode 10 yes that means we only have two left in the dozen uh and thanks to the uh, patrons that already signed up they're keeping it going they're going to jump start it and they get bonus episodes. Yeah, so if you just go to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales, everybody, you can sign up. And that's Ooh, the kind of afternoon that it is. Got it on the mic. And I got to drive to San Antonio after this. He doesn't have to drive. Mighty Soul will drive. <laughs> Mighty Soul will drive. Uh, yeah, everybody, the, the 13. So we just passed our dozen, first dozen patrons, which is awesome. We really appreciate it. Very enthusiastic. Very nice uh, comments left inside the Patreon. Thank you, Comment Wall. Um, and everybody else that, that listens, it literally, if everybody listened to the show, we could produce so much amazing content in regards to what's going on right now and what'll be happening in the future. Cause no matter if backdoor Biden wins or not, Back there's still Biden. a lot of shit that's Back going to be going on. Biden. I never heard that one. Dude. So, and I wanted to kick it off with this because this happened, happened this morning. YouTube, uh, basically released a new update to their policy where mm. they're going to be removing videos that claim any kind of fraud or irregularities mm. made the election go in the favor of Biden. Mm. So that sounds like, <laughs> see you at Patreon. <laughs> it is. And you're, you're hearing people like Crowder and Poole and, and people that are in this space say how dangerous that can be. One, mm. for free speech. And it goes right back to Section 230 about how these companies are too big. They don't have enough response. They don't have, they don't take responsibility for anything that's on their platforms and mm. so on and so forth. And it makes things like like Patreon and uh, I mean, really, honestly, OnlyFans, all those like paywall type of services that help you make your content and help it be listener supported makes it so much more important. Speaking of big tech and how they're able to kind of tamper a little bit, I know I'm not supposed to say that because they're going to kick me off, but check this out, man. You have the ability to boost certain hashtags, hide certain hashtags, um, really steer the conversation. For example, oh, let's go ahead and get the word out to everybody in Georgia about voting. They can just press a little button type of thing. Boom, you're logging on to Instagram in Georgia and they're giving you a nice little reminder up top. You know, and, and in theory, it's like they want everyone to vote. But there's just so many instances of like the only people they're trying to suppress and fact check are of one particular side or opinion. Yeah, it is because you could you you could be in the know of what you're trying to follow. Like, let's just say that you're on the right and you're really following people that are covering this stuff really well. And then you go to Twitter and you see why isn't this trending, right? Like, what exactly makes a topic or a person or a hashtag trend? And obviously, it's it's the powers that be. Mm -hmm. It's scary. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's a big part of it. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of good stuff to talk about today, man. You, you, before we even start recording, brought up uh, Ed Calderon again, mm -hmm. and I started, I sub subscribed to that podcast, which we'll give it a shout out when I pull it up, but you were kind of blowing my mind with some stuff I hadn't really heard, because yeah. we were talking about China, and then before we even get into it, I guess, it's funny how many people get so upset, mm -hmm. not only with what you're doing right now, but that a lot of the recent clips, or a lot of the talk has been about China, oh, China's mm -hmm. so big and bad, why are you oh, so they, worried about they're China? They're defending it, right? Almost in a way, like, yeah. they're so clueless to it, and think yeah. it's so not a non-thing, mm. that they're like, shut the fuck up already, you know? Take your L. It's like, bro, we're not even talking about that. The all caps ones are hilarious. Like all caps, like shut the fuck up already. You don't know what you're talking about. And they won't unfollow. Yeah, yeah. They're still there. They won't block themselves. They want me to do it. But um, shout out to that podcast, man. Let me. I, I j I'm new to it. I've only heard one episode. My mind was blown. It's called the Sean Ryan Show. S H A W N. He's an ex Navy SEAL. But episode number 007. He had Ed Calderon, drug cartel narcos ex expert. So this dude, Ed Calderon, he's from Tijuana, is in Mexico, Baja California. And he grew up there. 
I'm gonna give y'all the long story. He was never involved in police, uh, like military, law enforcement, nothing like that. But when 9-11 happened, the border got so tight, it affected his family's business and his ability to provide, right? Mm. So he w- they were looking for a single uh, dudes with no kids, no wife, nothing like that. He signs up. It's like hardcore militarized police. So he served under President Calderon, which was more right, more conservative. Not like AMLO, the new guy is a little bit more left. So his job was to kick doors and do raids on cartels all day. So this, um, this interview is interesting because he's talking about like, now he lives in the U.S. I'll, I can maybe get into why he had to bounce from Mexico. But now he's doing like training and courses. We need to go sign up for this shit. For sure. Because he'll teach you how to get out of handcuffs, how to get out of zip ties, how to like reload some shit with one hand kiss your hand blown off and then you know this is why you want the thigh holster big dog because you know because your armor you know you can still reach for it you know in case you in disguise you got a trench coat on you go some john wick shit he's like pretty much uh macgyver (laughs) on some a-team shit but long story short on the interview he touched upon so many interesting little things for example um he said that all the cartels had a hard time during the lockdown during the pandemic Except for one, uh, you know, I don't want to be naming too many, but they're out of Jalisco and they wanted the new ones. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? No, I'm talking about. And uh, anyway, they grew exponentially. And his hypothesis is that they have a direct connect with the fentanyl with the government from over there. You know what I'm mm. talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I, we know what you're talking about. You know where, where the plague came from. Right. And he said, people be thinking like, oh, it's just gangsters selling to gangsters. He's like, no, don't nothing get moved up out of there. Out of C H I N A. Uh, <laughs> come on now. CCP. I know y'all listening. He said, don't nothing come up out of there without the state's approval. He's like, no, it's them. Like, they're involved. And fascinating, mind blowing. He said that the cartels are already looking at what American cities are defunding their police so that they can just rearrange assets and resources and distribution routes or set up a cell. And I know some of this might sound like fear mongering, right. but these dudes are very innovative. They have tunnels, they have routes. I mean, he said the administrative side, like just the bookkeeping side of the dope game. He's like, they're A1. He said, because you have, you know, it's like centralized, but then you have these little plazas, like a little cell that might control a little city or a little region. And they got to give a cut. And it's like a little pyramid type of scheme. But he, you know, they're sophisticated. And the kind of training, they're bringing Israelis. Like, they, he literally got to kick it with the Pozolero, the man that would disappear thousands of bodies by making caustic acid from shit you could find at Home Depot. And he basically describes how the dude that turns you into stew, <laughs> you know, basically gets rid of people. Uh, he describes, like, how that dude just dresses like an albanil. He dresses like a, like a worker. And makes his stuff and basically when he says that he ain't never killed nobody they just bring him the bodies to dispose and he has to get rid of like tattoos and and teeth and facial he runs it that those parts through another process yeah but um very interesting man how they're trained how they're using drones now how you see a lot of middle eastern influence that when they bust people at the border it's chinese it's afghani it's all kind of folks he says sometimes they find farsi language translators like uh what is that was farsi persian was that iran iranian is it no no no. i think that's afghani Mm. i think but i may be wrong um he says the cartel people tell their um their underlings or whatever like don't mess with none of that like don't do not get involved don't mix in with anything from over there from the middle east he says because they're afraid of being categorized as a terrorist group once the cartels get marked as like a terrorist group then it's a different ball game, but um, so much information, s- things that that you don't think are related, mm-hmm. interrelated. For example, he said that when when Trump pulled a lot of the uh, jobs back away from um, pulled jobs out of Mexico back into the U.S., like factories, maquiladoras. I mean, you know, there's a lot of American businesses that do conduct business out there. That when he brought it back. It left that void and China moved right in. So it's almost like China's colonizing mm. other countries in a way, but their influence is definitely there. He said that there's Cuban intelligence, like 
spy Cuban spies working in Mexico with help from you know where. Mm -hmm. uh, he says that they're finding fentanyl laboratories in Mexico with clear instructions on like how to whip up your own fentanyl to, to mix it in with the heroin so that shit hit harder or something. Basically, they, they're making bootleg pain pills and it's part of the opioid crisis. But he says these labs are coming with direct laboratory instructions from chemists and stuff from over there. So people might listen to Red Pill Tamales and be like, Man, I don't know what Rob and Chingo be talking about. Man, what is why why y'all worried about China? It's like, bro, look at what China. I, I, okay, this part I don't know a lot about. I've been hearing about some shit Zimbabwe went through okay. with their elections and foreign influence and propaganda and and all that kind of stuff and where they are now. So I'm I got to do a little bit of research. Yeah. But uh, and when you hear when anybody hears spies, they're all you know they're like their their antennas go up like this is bullshit. What are you talking about? But that is so real, bro. Yeah, it, we're right here in Houston, Texas. We're not that far from the Chinese uh, the Chinese consulate. Mm -hmm. It's not that far. This is one of the ones they had to shut down. Uh, I don't know who in the government, but somebody over here in the U.S. was like, Nah, dog, y'all are a den of spies. Y'all are doing way too much. And mm. and the shit supposedly uh, isn't that when they were burning the papers? They were yeah. They some shit caught on fire, but they were like taking just tearing papers. Yeah, because you know, I mean, ain't, this was not that long ago either. No, it wasn't. Like, it's around the corner. It's not that long ago at all. Yeah, but you know, they say that a lot of their consulates, their consulates are like that. I mean, they're competitive. All these countries, all these superpowers are competitive, and. You know, all wars are economic, so they're going to just try to get influence. You know, if we can take over a little bit of NBA, a little bit of Hollywood, you know, get some congressmen in our pocket, uh, see who they could corrupt, who they could get dirt on, who they could blackmail. I mean, yeah, like you said, the spy shit might sound crazy. Yeah. But think about it. We, I mean, where do you think the CIA, what do you think our intelligence what our intelligence agencies are? What are they for? They're to go destabilize other countries. It's just what's happening to us. They're trying to destabilize other countries, influence elections, help with propaganda, um, influence, get info, shit. Yeah, the U.S. had ordered China to close the consulate in Houston just hours after there were reports that documents were being burned in the Houston's facility's courtyard. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, man, they're doing too much. Oh, this was this year? This was, yeah. This was earlier this year. Yeah. Fucking and, crazy. And supposedly a lot of their consulates are like that, but for some reason, either this is one of the worst ones or this is one of the ones they were more concerned about. But um and that actually kind of brings me into another point when we were because we were talking about that. There was a a story that a Chinese spy had infiltrated uh, California and some California representatives, one in part being uh Eric Swalwell. Who is, a, who is a representative of California. Uh, he hasn't actually made a comment on this yet either, but this was reported by Axios. And it, the spy's name was Fang Fang, you know? So it's like, you can't... It's like, like a vampire. Yeah. It, it's basically the simulation is winking at us. <laughs> the simulation is telling us, I can't wait to red pill y'all about that because there's new scientific shit going on that kind of proves that we're living in the Matrix. Right. Like, for example, we're alone in the universe. Like, they, some scientific, I got to do my, I got to bring my sources, but, like, some new legit shit is saying that we're alone in the universe. Like, we're just a fucking computer game. We're a simulation. There's, there's no point in having this, whatever type of futuristic computer God is working with, there's no point in using up computing power trying to host multiple universes. If that makes sense, but anyway, we 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 right, right now we're on the baby tamale. Yeah, right. This ain't full foil episodes. Nah, yet. nah. We gotta just so ease them into it. She basically uh, targeted, you know, somebody that would have the potential to make it big on the national stage for, you know, I guess the CCP kind of agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was an interesting video that kind of came along with the story of how California representatives, in, in particular, have a relationship with um, with with china mm -hmm. so i want to play i want to play this video because I, I only caught some of it and you and i can listen to all of it and this is representative uh diane feinstein who's another democrat representative out of uh california Do you, are you familiar with her when you see her maybe you will mm. they say that a lot of contracts were cut from chinese polit i mean um california politicians mm -hmm. and like china companies like for example oh our state you know state of california leads 
I mean, it's unavoidable to get shit from China. Mm-hmm. I'm, everything I got on, probably these Nikes on my feet, probably made in China. <laughs> but uh, but still, it's it's kind of interesting that it's like, could you have made those masks in, uh, domestic? Right. Senator Dianne Feinstein, I'm awful sorry I can't join you today, but the Senate's in session, so as you might guess, I'm here in Washington. I want to thank Governor Brown for his leadership in reestablishing California's official global trade and investment presence. And thank you also to the Bay Area Council and the many California businesses and economic development organizations that have made this important private-public partnership possible. And thank you to our many partners and friends in China Mm. for your strong commitment to growing the economic and cultural ties between our two great countries. I'm especially pleased that California's first trade office has its home in Shanghai. And I have a very special connection with Shanghai. As mayor of San Francisco a long time ago, I had the honor of establishing a sister city relationship with Shanghai. It was the first sister city relationship between a United States and a Chinese city. And to this very day, I remember Mayor Wang Daohan very well, and Zhang Zemin and Mayor Zhu Rongji, two of which, both Zhang and Zhu, became uh, president and premier, respectively, of the country. The relationship, though, yielded tremendous economic and cultural benefits, and that's been true over the past 30 years. I know this new office will build on the powerful and unique partnership between California and China. Mm. You know, I, you could just immediately try to come to any kind of conspiratorial I mean, ideas from that clip. But when you see what's going on, this is from 2013. Mm. So if things haven't necessarily gotten mm. better when it comes to the relationship between the two powers, you know? Well, Obama went in when? 08? What was that? Uh, that was, uh, yeah, 08. Eight to, and then 12? Yeah, and then 16 was Trump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, if I hadn't been here, maybe because my brain is like primed to to really detect anything. You know Your what I mean? To, to be, what's the word? To be skeptical. Yeah. And to, uh, it, maybe it's confirmation bias. Mm-hmm. Me being like, see, smoking gun. <laughs> Where there's you smoke, know, there's gotta yeah. be fire. What else do you want to hear? I, I've been to Shanghai. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We went to Shanghai. Me and Marisol went out there. We were, out there, we were out there in China for like 10 days. We were in Shanghai mostly. We went to Beijing for a day. And then we had a long-ass layover in Taipei. And um, so we just kind of walked around, got a cab and shit. But uh, so you couldn't really tell because it's a different type of communism. Mm-hmm. It's, like a, it's like a hybrid of some sort. So you didn't. You saw the cameras everywhere, but it felt normal. It's like, yeah. oh, there's a Starbucks. It, oh, they got a... No, they didn't, wouldn't have no Supreme store because intellectual property they're just like no we'll make our own supreme. yeah fuck supreme you know what i mean they'll be like no you can't i don't know how that shit works with, with, with trademarks and all that but um uh, but yeah considering how aggressively they you know it's it's common sense yeah why wouldn't you dude china it's not that long ago that they were hurting bad i mean the the communist party couldn't feed everybody that's why they had to kind of like roll with the punches. That's why they allow wet markets mm-hmm. because that was a way some really, really poor people were able to feed themselves, which was, I'm going to sell these fucking random ass little animals and all this weird shit that maybe some people might want to eat. And um, anyway, my point is that they have progressed quickly. You know, they did a whole bunch of shit to get out of the situation that we're in. But ahora ya se están pasando, güey. Like, like now they, I mean, it's common sense. Why wouldn't they be like, fuck yeah, dude. Cal- they're probably celebrating saying, dude, California, America has a sister city. And now they just opened up an office. So you're going to walk by somewhere in Shanghai and see the office of the state of California, United States. What the fuck? 
Yeah, and funny <laughs> enough, there's a there's a doctor, uh, was it Dr. Don Sheng, uh, vice dean of the School of International Relations? There's a video on YouTube if you want to look it up. It's called CCP Expert. We can't fix Trump via Wall Street, but with Biden. Dot dot dot. And it's all in it's all in Chinese, but it's got subtitles. And it's interesting because the whoever this uh, inconvenient truths uh, channel put it up is basically kind of gave a little synopsis of the CCP is opening its financial markets to show goodwill with Biden as it can't fix Trump via Wall Street. The CCP also wants foreign players to cultivate the CCP's own tree in its backyard. Why was the CCP uh, able to fix everything in trouble with the U.S. before 2016? Because it has its own people at the top of America's core of the inner circle of power and influence. And this doctor goes into that. So how trustworthy is this doctor of this School of International Relations? Who knows, right? But he's saying it right there. I would say in plain English, but it's in plain Chinese (laughs) with English subtitles. And it makes you think, like... Where is this circle of in, like of infiltrators, basically, I guess, spies that have this kind of power with every administration prior to this? Or maybe not even spy. It might just be like big, quote unquote, big business money dudes. To everybody listening right now, especially if you're a hustler and you're in business, um, it, you know, it would seem very attractive to have somebody from any country with a whole bunch of bread yeah. being like, Hey, you know, want to open one up over there? Or like, how many of these you got? What you need, man? A sponsor? You know what I mean? Like, who wouldn't? Who in their right mind? It's like everybody has a price damn near. Like, who in their right mind wouldn't be like, man, that's my Chinese partner, man. That's the plug. A lot of motherfuckers would jump on that shit. That's just like uh, the Young Turks. You know, very, very progressive, left-leaning channel on YouTube who now has a channel on YouTube TV. (laughs) I don't know if it's on any other... Yeah, right? How how convenient. So they do want you to talk about uh, politics. Right. They have a... I forgot who it was, but they have like... If it's not millions, it's close to the billions in backing from foreign money that, that fund the Young Turks. Uh, and that's just another rabbit hole you can go in. And he was actually a part of that, that video that I sent you about AOC and how she was, because somebody mentioned on the podcast page that she's just a paid actress. It was kind of put in this position. So the whole, you know, again, your antennas go up. I know if you see this, you're like, ah, what the fuck? But it was a really compelling story of how they had it like a, basically a casting call for nominees for this district in New York. And out of 10,000, she was the one that came out to be the superstar and stood out. And then they start going through the people behind the curtains that pull all the strings. And it's people from this campaign, from this uh, part of the world who are, you know, graduates even from Harvard that are writing the scripts, telling you what to say. And it's fucking nuts. Well, that I, I, I really want to look into that because sometimes I'd be high. Yeah. And I'd be watching TV and shit. And all those people are talented. So, you know, like a Tucker Carlson, I mean, even if someone else wrote the script, you know, they still have to be good persuaders and performers, almost like actors. I mean, right. they, they, why do you think Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon and Cuomo, all these people get paid big bucks because they got to go on TV and win Emmys? They get to say, man. <laughs> well, that's his brother. I'm, I'm talking about Chris Cuomo. Oh, yeah. But, um, but you know, they get to be on TV. They get to sell all these commercials and shit. So this this... Let's just say alleged. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to watch it. This alleged scenario where if you have the right face and the right gender and the right ethnicity, and if you put a team around them, fuck yeah. I mean, depending on how radical they're able to be and how many, how much return on investment. Mm-hmm. That's how I want to put it. Like you said, you could have some Harvard people, some like just knowing persuasive people. Don't say it like that. Say it like this. Use this word, yeah. not that word. And people that aren't as charismatic as these people that they put in the front lines, like that. And they kind of go into it, like this individual that you know, the campaign manager, basically for her, Harvard graduate, really intelligent, but kind of like Aspergersy and kind of just mm-hmm. awkward. There's no way he would have you know rose to this kind of occasion mm-hmm. like the way she has. But it's also like if you ever watch any of her videos or, or interviews, it's so. I mean, everything's so cherry picked for her, and she conveys things in such a like airheady kind of way if that makes sense and then you start to think and i honestly and shout out to whoever sent that that in i didn't really and i guess we all should do this when we see people in figures like this with a lot of attention and a lot of power all of a sudden come out of nowhere we have to think where the fuck do they come from all we ever know is that she was a bartender right she worked in a restaurant how the fuck she go from that to being one of the most if not the most popular congresswoman in history well shit we sitting here talking about her exactly and, uh since we're on the subject um do you, do you know that goya did you send me that? I did. Yeah, she's the employee of the month. So uh, my buddy Michael Berry interviewed uh, Bob Unanwe, the CEO. Oh, dope. The CEO of Goya. So on Michael Berry's show, 
he literally, they're just having a conversation. Michael Berry's interviewing him. He's giving him some rapid fire questions, just picking his brain. So out of all the Goya products, you know, what's the one that really speaks to you? Oh, olive oil, man, olive oil. Because, you know, my father, he, he opened up the factory. I had to go down there and this, this, and that. And in the middle of the combo, he's like, I forget how AOC comes up or the boycott. He's like, you know, uh, oh, I don't know if you know this, Michael, but we actually gave her employee of the month. And he's like, what? <laughs> so the shit went viral off of the Michael Berry show. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you can listen to his podcast. I just, we just had lunch with him. Yeah. We literally just had lunch with him. And um, shout out to El Tiempo Cantina. Can't tell you all the spots, though. Oh, I love El Tiempo. I, I had never really been there. Uh, last time I was with Michael Berry, he ordered some in. But today we, um, we were taking Penny to the park. And it was like up the street. He's like, hey, what you doing? Boom, we met up. Nice. But anyway, shit went viral. Uh, Bob Unanwe was like, yeah, she boosted our sales 1,000%. He said, mind you, she's Puerto Rican. And she turned her back on her Puerto Rican brothers and sisters because we're a pretty, they're pretty much a Puerto Rican family. They, uh, I think they're originally from Spain or some shit, but they live in Puerto Rico forever. And they donate millions of pounds of food and and so on and so forth and aoc and joaquin castro i think that's the guy's name from san antonio shout out to san antonio um they both were like uh you might want to think twice next time buying goya and obviously i was already looking at the left kind of funny and i was already feeling kind of right so i saw this bullshit boycott like oh okay i thought the left was pro-immigrant what happened uh well yeah we're pro-immigrant up until you fucking disagree with us Mm -hmm. and you don't just bend with the mob and i was just roasting people on twitter all day when that shit happened i was like y'all this shit is so corny and we already talked about how i wanted to invest in goya because i knew this shit wasn't gonna work but they opened up shop in brookshire texas i really encourage you guys to go listen to the to the interview bob unanwe ceo of goya on michael berry's show because he mentions he's like he says bro I can't, we, Goya Foods can't do business out of California. He's like, there's no way. He's like, there's too many roadblocks, too many hurdles. I can never get started yeah. giving jobs and creating and building and distributing. He says, here, they're in Brookshire over there. Beautiful by, Brookshire. They're over there by Katie. Yeah, he I says, 10. Come on, somebody. I'm about to pass right by right now. I might pull over. Heading out west. Spend my, I might pull up at Goya right now. See if they hire me. Just take a selfie and just post Fuck it. Yeah, what's up? Welcome to Texas, Goya. <laughs> And um, no, they said, he's like, business-friendly climate. He's like, beautiful place to raise a family. He's like, I can actually get to work. I can start providing these jobs. He's like, they built a rice paddy farm. Ooh. So they got all these acres for rice, all these employees, all these workers. They distribute for other brands, including Nestle. He says, we're right here off of I-10. He's like, boom, we can send trucks to Jacksonville. Boom, we can send trucks to LA. Um, he's like, we're right in the middle. He sounds very happy. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Years ago, like my family and I have always had cattle and uh, we leased a bunch of, uh, we had a bunch of land out there leased for a bunch of heads of cattle. And at the time, I remember my dad saying like, we should really buy out here. We should really, this is like 10, 12 years in ago in Brookshire. Yeah. And never did just, you know, moved the herds from other land to other land. And then now you just go out there and it's, it's fucking, it's beautiful. A lot of development. You got a lot of business going on out there. And people are constantly going through it because you have to go to come to Houston or go to Austin or San Antonio. How far, how far is it away from, uh, what is that, Highway 99? What is that loop they built? Uh, is it 99? I guess it is. Um, I think that's what it's called. It's not too far. I mean, at that point, you could really get anywhere pretty fast once you hop on 99 because you can go all the way up to the woodlands, you know, or around and then down here. We were uh, we took the kids to Rudolph's Christmas light show. Oh yeah, yeah. What Hockley? Yeah, it's in Hockley, Texas, which is out. Where is that? Going towards Bryan College Station. Yeah, going so, towards fucking uh, Bluebell. Yeah, so it, towards Brenham. Yeah, Brenham. And um, well, first of all, we got to the Rudolph thing, which is a beautiful business during a pandemic because you're in your car and you're just driving through this land with some Christmas lights. Well, they had these like. I don't know what they were, fresh out of high school, girls, like going to all the cars, almost like popcorn, but it's like, we got waters, blah, blah, blah. I said, all right, let me get four waters. She's like, okay, they're two bucks a piece. All right, here's a 20. Nice. So it's $8 was my change. They're just like, um, okay. Uh, she's whispering, like, he gave me a 20 and it's $8. And she's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and they're just like sitting there like, um, fuddling the money and shit, waiting for me to give them the answer. And I, I look back at my 12-year-old, like, you see? 
You see why I'm on you? <laughs> you see why I'm on you? Talking about get off TikTok. Do you know all your timetables? Like, is that project done? Have you read? No more screens. I was like, because we're finally like 12, 12, 12. <laughs> fucking 12. Do you have singles? Count from 8 to 10 and then give me what's the, the rest of it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what did Mickey say? Uh, she was just like, yeah, I know, Dad. Because <laughs> she hears me complain. Because guess what? Every time we're at a stoplight, there's a white person over there by her school. Well, all over town, you know, it's white folk. It's people of all colors begging. But we tend to see white folk begging. And I tell her, oh, I, baby, I thought it was white privilege. Ain't that what they're telling us? It's white privilege. So if you're white, ain't no reason to be begging, right? Because white people get all the handouts or yeah. whatever. I was like, what happened to white privilege? I was like, you see, it ain't. Don't fall for that. Don't fall for white privilege. Because it's like, you're not guaranteed shit in this life. Yeah, you're for gonna sure. You're going to have to fucking work. Dude, we were at Target yesterday. And, sh- I mean, shout out Sugar Land. It's a pretty nice area. And you never see people begging for money. Walked out of Target of all places, which is a pretty nice place yeah. considering, you know, Walmart. So, it sounds like you're hating on Walmart. <laughs> I am definitely hating on Walmart. Because uh, even the ones out there are not the best. But anyway, come outside. Ladies scare the shit out of me. A white lady is like, you got to get some help with a real deep, like, mm. Tim Dillon-y type yeah. of voice. And I was that like, whiskey. She yeah. dehy- dehydrated. All the cigarettes, all the whiskey. Uh-huh. never seen water uh it was just sad it was like fuck. sounds like me no no, no <laughs> cigarettes no cigarettes no that's disgusting but yeah and it just it happens everywhere like it, it's not again it's a fucking the skin thing and there was something else in the news oh california wanted to start uh, a movement to vaccinate by skin color did you see that oh my god did you see that i let me pull it up while they want talking. minorities to get the vaccine first yeah <sighs> just thoughts before i even pull this up so so speaking of skin color and all this type of weird thinking this little cat I follow on TikTok, his name is David Lamas. I think that's how you pronounce it. And he's always doing these like conservative videos, but they're always like spot on. And he says, he says, whatever happened to judging people based on the, their content of their character and not the color of their skin? And then he plays Biden's clip saying, we have the most diverse cabinet ever. You know, we got everything, you know, gay people, black people, yellow, purple, green, like we stripes. We got everything. It's most diverse cabinet. And uh, that little kid is like, whatever happened to just like, are these the most qualified people for the job? Or are you just trying to like please everybody with this fucking political theater of like, look at all the darkies and little brownies and you know what I mean? Look at all these multi, it's like a Crayola box. Look at my look at my cabinet. It's a crayon. Look how I got all the colors. It's almost like he was bragging and shit. Look, I got yellow <laughs> ones. I, what, what you want? Some what you want? A coconut? I got some of them too. I got the green ones coming from Mars out of yeah. the bunkers. I got the brown ones with the white on the inside. Everyone's looking at us as those <laughs> brown with the white on the inside. That's yeah. what we are now. Uh, speaking of coconuts, speaking um, of- so I forgot to shout out Rocco, right? Uh, the actor. Oh yeah, from he, the Mayans. Yeah, he's in the Mayans. He hit me up randomly. Uh, shout out to Vincent Rocco Vargas on Instagram. He's uh, So we have a common friend, uh, Richard Cabral, the mm-hmm. actor. And uh, th- I just spoke to this dude, Rocco. I never met him or anything, but he DM'd me like, hey, man, you know, y- y'all keep it up. Like what y'all doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so he works with Richard Cabral, and I'll let you get to that clip. And uh, anyway. No rush. So Rocco saw my... Uh, well, I was telling him about my clip about Latino Hollywood. Yeah. He's like, dude, all these motherfuckers don't put their money where the mouth is. Because he, he's actually like producer. Like he's he's got scripts. Like he's putting shit together. He's trying to make projects. And he's not waiting around complaining over crumbs. We're trying to build a bread truck. That clip, for instance, uh, I don't know if you have to look on your Instagram. It's got probably more views than most things I've seen. On mine? Yeah. Pull it up there just to see out of curiosity. Because... Like you said, and I think you even told people, I was like, look, y'all are complaining, but this is exactly what y'all want to fucking see. Which one? The Hollywood one? Yeah, I think it's the IGTV on your on your feed. I want to say it's got like 40 or 50,000 views just as for a clip, or it's got 26.3. Oh, yeah, yeah, Latino Hollywood, yeah, 26.3. And that's just a 60-second IGTV clip. Like, if that didn't resonate with people, I don't know what well, does. Well, even, I'm glad you brought that up. Even on my Instagram feed, people always like, Change the subject, Chingo. Nobody cares. You're talking about China, blah, 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 right? And I'm like, okay, why don't you scroll around and look at the amount of engagement or comments? And it's like night and day. It, it could literally be like a picture of my kids. It could be like, it just varies, right? It'll be like, oh, 77 comments. Oh, okay, well, they, they kind of like that. And then you get to 
low information Latino voters have no idea how big of an issue China is. Thankfully, you guys have me. Another red pill tamales up now. And it's like 433 comments. I've been neglecting my Facebook. I posted some shit on Facebook story, which I'd never do because my shit's not connected. Man, the views on those Facebook stories are yeah. like 30,000. Interesting. But anyway, go on. I'm over here bragging about vanity metrics. <laughs> vanity metrics. Oh, dude, TikTok? Oh, you haven't seen me on Give Me a Moment. I'll pull it up. Please do. Where can we follow you on TikTok, Chingo? At Real Chingo Bling. Are you on Parlor by chance? I'm on OnlyFans, too. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Parlor. Shit, if these patrons don't come through, we're going to see Chingo on OnlyFans also. You guys want to see my feet? Right. <laughs> but speaking of TikTok in China, I posted something on there and it got removed. Community guidelines violation. What see, was the? I, I clicked see details and it just said illegal activities and regulated goods. <laughs> was somebody maybe smoking weed? On Do you that remember show? what it was? What clip it was? It was a clip promoting my show uh, oh, tomorrow. But anyway, I posted a TikTok a while back of uh, that. Uh, this was when you saw fucking um, Sarah Silverman and fucking Hulk. What's his name? Sarah Silverman. And the guy that plays the Hulk? I forget. Fuck, whatever his name is. They're all naked and they're telling you to vote and stuff. All I did was post that video with a little commentary and I was like, oh, I removed it for nudity or whatever. I was like, I see it everywhere. Just because I didn't agree with the message, you're going to take my TikTok Is that what it was? I guess is what it was because you you saw it everywhere. It was so weird. I'm Mark Ruffalo. What What did the... What did the whole topless thing have to do with anything? Just getting attention, right? It was getting attention just like they did that... uh, I take responsibility. Yes, that one. I take responsibility. It's no longer enough to not be racist. You have to be anti-racist. That one? Yes, that one. And then wherever they're You're this, guilty until singing. proven innocent. Yeah, all that shit. Like, I, man, like, I don't want to sound like a bad person. Like, I agree with a lot of uh, the, the fundamentals of the ideas of this shit, but the approach to it is just really weird. It's really, it's not effective, I don't think, right? Mm-hmm. And people will be like, well, he won, so I guess it was. Well, did he? It's not over yet. It was what effective? Like, the campaigning, those, yeah, like that style of campaigning. I heard a lot of that shit that they were, that um, I guess the Democrats are doing backfired. I would agree. For example, um, I think it was a study, I can't remember where I heard it, so please fact check me, that they found later that the whole defund the police thing was starting to uh, uh, make them lose some backing. Yeah, even like they people, themselves said, like, we, we need to tone it down with, the, you know, the defunding the police. And Oh, yeah, CNN was uh, uh, showing up in the oh, polls. Oh, yeah, they did, they did. It's showing up in the polls. Yeah. And Cuomo's just there, yeah. <sighs> Don Limones. Was, Don it's Limones. showing up in the polls. Pinche Limones. <laughs> I don't have the, the tweet uh, queued up, but basically California's vaccine plan will prioritize blacks and Latino uh, communities. Before I even read this, they had it on the news. They were talking about this. And I forgot what outlet it was, but it was black and Latinx. They were using Latinx as the term for Latinos, but not putting Latinos. Where, where was it? I, it, I mean, it might have well, been... Well, they seen, do it all the time. Wait, I never saw that on TV. You're, oh, you're surprised that they said Lat, Latinx or Latinx? Yeah, but they said... No, they said Latinos, but they spelt it out as Latinx, mm. as if that's just... Oh, the spe- that's what you're saying. Yeah. <sighs> maybe maybe I'm just... <laughs> maybe we're maybe old. I'm, maybe I'm old and I'm dumb and I'm from the hood. I don't know. But okay. to me, some of this shit just don't jive with me. Yeah. Like, can we just be straight up? Like, I, let me ask you this. Sure. It, would you say that it's a, a decent filter to view a lot of this political stuff through the lens of you have your, I guess the lens of what is the left, you know what is leftism, and what, what would you say the other shit rightism, <laughs> the right, you yeah, know, all this left right bullshit. But yeah. to like, I guess when some people would hear, well, duh, Chingo, they want to, they want the minorities to get first dibs, not because it's bad, it's because minorities are oppressed, and they don't, you know, they, they're, uh, uh, there's disparities and inequalities and inequities, and, and most of them won't get the vaccine because the white people are going to hog it up, and then there won't be no vaccine left for us, so we're going to make y'all go first. Oh, that's it? Oh, really, everybody, that's it? I'm not saying the vaccine is bad, because I don't know enough about it, Yeah, but... I know that I'm doing everything in my power to make sure, you know, you, I'm not saying I'm going to just dodge Corona forever. Yeah. But it's like, man, even I've been tested twice. How the fuck do I know them tests were even accurate? Because Elon Musk, you heard about that shit? Mm-hmm. How he took a test. Bunch of false positives, it right? Took, it, well, he took the test. It came back positive. I believe it was positive first. And then he's like, okay, 
same clinic, same nurse. Hey, you guys mind if I hang out for an hour? And I got bread. I want another test. Okay, same nurse, same spot. Oh, it's negative. Well, that's fucking weird. Let's do it a couple more times. So it was like positive, negative, positive, negative. Excuse and, me. And then uh, that's awesome, Rob. <laughs> See what happens when you y'all don't, y'all not y'all need to get on that Patreon so that we can have a some, mute button. Some antacids. We don't have a mute button. <laughs> we don't got no Pepto-Bismol up here. You were burping constantly drinking that wine. Sorry, dude. I don't know what episode. it was. I don't know what it was. Pinche el tiempo. Maybe it's my body asking for water. Like, <laughs> will you stop with the world? I can't find the stack because I wasn't. I didn't have it queued up. But since you brought it up, there was a, an interesting statistic that, like, a certain percentage of people w- will basically. Uh, I think it was related to mask wearing. That don't wear masks test positive like X percent exponentially less more than people that wear masks all the time and they found this out by asking when they got, when they tested positive is uh or do you wear your mask you know whatever they'd be like all the time we never stop and they they tested positive like 70 plus percent more than those that didn't or that said i don't really don't wear a mask or i don't fucks with that uh my boy jerry garcia caught it and he 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 wears his mask religiously well, because they're fucking dirty cloth masks that aren't clean properly. You know, you never. You're listening right now. All of us, all of all our new friends. All y'all, some. Hey, man, some of y'all people that be trolling me. Some of y'all still got doo doo in y'all's boxes. <laughs> you Grown ass little boys with, with mustaches with doo doo in your drawers, but you want to hop on Chingle Bling's page. <sighs> you don't wash it. You don't touch it properly when you do. And if you, I think it's on the World Health Organization website and the CDC where you have to touch it on certain parts. You have to wash it within a certain commercial washing machine. Otherwise, it's not effective. But here we are still saying that you got to wear it. The mandate's everywhere. So the washing machine don't kill Rona? No. It unless doesn't? it's, it literally says, unless it's within a hospital washing machine and dryer. Maybe that's the only way they could guarantee it. Well, don't you want to guarantee? Well, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. They're based, the CDC and the WHO are basically saying the only way, like the utmost recommended way is you got to like, like what you just said, mm-hmm. don't do this, don't, do's and don'ts. To go back to that Latinx thing, the, the reason it kind of blew my mind is because Latinx is it's basically, it's like non-gender, right? Like you're not guy or girl. Why would you, why would you re- refer to an entire classification of people as Latino, and then write it out Latinx, which means that you're gender neutral, right? Well, I don't know. I can't explain like why they would pronounce it one way and write it the other. But I've, from what I've seen about Marxism and neo-Marxism, is that they do like to, uh, I guess, blame stuff on Western, basically white culture, right? Yeah. Like Western culture with the patriarchy. Mm-hmm. So by making everything um, like when they try to put females against males, like with feminism or, uh, you know, dark, you know, bright, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> you know, brown people versus white people, rich versus poor, mm-hmm. young versus old. It's almost like the Willie Lynch thing that, that we read on air mm-hmm. a few episodes back. Supposedly, I don't, I'm not saying that the whole Latinx thing is a Marxist agenda sure. or a neo-Marxist type of technique, but... It kind of fits. I wouldn't doubt it, only because that's their shit. That's what they want to do. They want you to need the government and not the man. You know what I'm saying? For like, sure. like basically, um, the whole thing about we don't need men. You know, a mama could do it too, and this and that, and um, and the whole thing about like, you know, your Planned Parenthood or even the welfare system. You know, say you're not with them. Um, but definitely the whole Latinx thing of trying to make everything non-gender and fluid and it's not really man. It could be woman and it's both. And it's almost like an attack on men. Mm-hmm. That's what it is, right? It's like yeah. Latino is too male, masculine. It's like, like Marisol explained it to uh, Mickey. She's like, well, in the Spanish language, you have masculine, feminine, neuter. Mm-hmm. She was like, it's always been like that. It's a part of the Spanish language. You know, like, why are they having to make everything like, no, there is no gender or or down with the man? I love it when you see those memes that like, there's like a, you know, non-binary kind of shirt on Amazon, for instance, but the only choices are male and female. <laughs> you can choose. Like, if you go to Amazon and buy a shirt, it's for, is it male or female? Like, those are the choices, but the shirt itself says like, non-binary. Oh, you could buy a one, oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> you know how funny that it's is? It's ironic. It's so hilarious. It's super ironic that you could buy a, 
a non, shirt. Yeah, non-binary, gender-fluid T-shirt. But, but you got to pick if it's for boys or for girls. Yeah. So it'll fit you right. Exactly. As, as long as history has existed, men have always been able to be di- like, uh, differentiated by what they wore. That's just the thing. Men and women have always worn different things to, to distinguish if they're a man or a woman. All of a sudden, people forget that. All of a sudden, it's just like, that's not a thing. That's not true. Well, the argument is, you know, in these sociology classes, which are usually kind of Marxist principles, you know, you're going to learn in a sociology class, you're going to learn about Karl Marx. One of the main things they're going to show you in sociology 101 is there are certain systems in society that perpetuate differences along the lines of class, gender, and race and ethnicity. So basically, they, they're kind of what sociology does is they teach you to view the world through the lens of everything is racist, everything is a uh, homophobe or um, you know putting down women or not fair, or hey, they should be hey, they should have a trans dude beating up on a girl in an MMA fight. And things like that. Or, hey, the problem with Mexico is machismo. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, perv- you know, it's pervasive in Latin America, this Western patriarchy. And we need, to, we need to tear that down and rebuild this new gender fluid, non-binary Harry Styles and address on a magazine cover type of world. And it's like, really? Is that the problem? Or is that what the powers that be are telling us so that they can pin us each- against each other? So it's male versus female. Everyone's bitching about somebody else. Everybody's protesting somebody else. Everybody's telling you to tax the rich. Everybody's telling you to boycott somebody. And I talked about it today on my Facebook Live. I said, one of the things I mentioned was, um, you know, how many folks are into building and encouraging and uplifting and creating and making and how many people are just about destroying, complaining, whining, tearing down, calling out, canceling, destroying, you know what I'm saying? Hate, leave a comment, troll, cancel, sell out. And over here, it's like, hey, how can we work together? Hey, my company wants to sponsor this. Uh, Oh, where's your bakery? I'm gonna go get muffins from you. Like, it's not enough of that. There's really not. That's actually a really good point. And I was going to kind of go off of off of any kind of, uh, you know, topic right now for what's going on in the news to kind of ask you something similar about that. Like, do you remember like prior to, let's just say 2020, everything was going well, you're touring, you're doing your thing, working on music when you got time, doing the family thing. At any point in time, did you look out into the world and think, all right, some this particular thing is totally unfair to a certain group of people? Did you Did you feel like there was any kind of super duper crazy uh, policies that needed to get passed in order for people to be able to live their life to their fullest? Or did you feel that everybody has the opportunity, like you just said, to be the person on the other side who uplifts himself and his community, does what he needs to do. Gives back. Prospers, yes. Gives jobs. Because you never had that poor old me mentality. No, no. I, I Dude, I've been blackballed my whole career. I'm in, you know, I'm, well, I guess I'm back in hip hop. <laughs> but like, I'm in hip hop. Most of the stations are going to play, what, black music or black artists if they're a hip-hop station. That's just kind of the nature of it, right? And, yeah, there might be an on-air Latino. Hey, it's your homeboy, da 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 in the evening. Hey, it's your hey, overnight weekend. Ah, hold on that. You know, you might have a, hey, it's your, you know, it's a, it's a orale la chicana, da 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 tuning yeah. in. Brand new YG. And it's like, oh, shit. Okay, well, goddamn. I thought you was going to play some Little Rock or something. <laughs> yeah. And... That's always tripped me out. You have these big Latin markets like Albuquerque, Phoenix, San Jose, so on, and San Antonio, and not bitching and complaining about media or radio, because they're probably like, look, dude, we're just trying to play these hits, and some of y'all people are still in development mode, and maybe y'all shit just ain't ready. So, um, you know, but at the same time, it's like, okay, so then do I fit in more on La Mega? Like, where the bachata's being played because i mean <laughs> they're more my color and it's right. in spanish and shit even though my my raps are mostly in english but do i need to go in the reggaeton fucking radio station where do i fit because i'm mexican-american i'm not finna do tejano i'm not a tejano singer i'm trying to do this hip-hop with a latin flair I, they're not gonna play me on the bachata station so i'm like fuck it i've been on the internet since before facebook and shit like that so to answer your question no i didn't really see the world as like Man, if they would just change this law that says Mexican Americans can't buy houses, you know there is no law. Yeah. Man, if they would just change that law that says, you know, little brown little brown girls can go to school with you know little white girls yeah. and so on. 
there was no law. My thing is always, what's your strategy? In other words, the shit that's going to have the biggest impact on your life or your kid's life or your community is education and strategy. Like, what type of leaders do your kids look up to? You know, what kind of example are you setting? What are your strategies? What, what technique, like, do you let your kids not do their homework and just fucking fail and flunk and then be surprised when they ain't doing shit later? It's like we have to raise our kids well enough to leave the nest. And these days, these kids are disrespectful as fuck. They're lazy. They don't know what, how good they have it. And I try to remind my kids as much as I can. Y'all know that in other countries, it ain't like this, you yeah. know? Because, I mean, even growing up, they'd be like, hey, there's starving kids in, in you know, some other country. You need to finish all your food or whatever. But I feel that strategy is something that's not talked about as much. Meaning, I could damn near tell you the trajectory of a kid, you know what I'm saying? Based mm. on, okay, well, fuck, um, are they even, are they thinking about taking the SAT? Like, do you go to a school where everybody's pregnant? Or do you go to school where they're all preparing for the SAT and they're looking at colleges and they're filling out applications? That alone should fucking tell you. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> especially growing up in a Latin you know, household, right? Uh, either your parents are really on your ass about your shit or they're pretty loosey-goosey with it, right? Wouldn't you agree? Like, I don't know how you grew up. Partic- I mean, my obviously... Parents, my parents were kind of loosey-goosey. Yeah, I, mine were too. And maybe that encouraged us to be more of the hustler outside of thinking outside of the box kind of thing that we ended up being. But... You know, there's an argument to say that maybe had they tried a little more or been a little more uh, like a part of it, kind of like you are with Mickey, like mm-hmm. especially, it would have sent you on a whole different trajectory, which isn't necessarily what we want or your fans would want. But, you know, just thinking about your own kids right now, if they're little, like how important are you going to make education or how important are you going to make sure that they learn how to do something? Yeah. have Yeah. Trades wise. No, I, I, dude, I got a bullshit marketing degree, got in all kinds of debt. I wish I knew how to do some electrical work, some plumbing. <laughs> Still some- got them lights out. Yeah, no, I really wish I was way more handy, and I wish I had more time to learn some of this shit. Yeah. Like, my damn garbage disposal's tripping. My little nephew, he works at a plumbing company, so I'm kind of waiting on him mm-hmm. so he could, like, well, let's do it together and I can learn some shit. Nice. But um, you were talking about trajectory, loosey-goosey. Um, yeah, just with education and how we focus on it. And growing up with, you know, Mexican parents, it's just like, it's not always there. And I don't want to like blame mm. it on our parents. This is what I was going to say. Um, this part of the conversation to the folks listening, obviously you want the best for your kids. And a lot of the stuff that we're talking about might sound crazy, but it, some of it makes sense too. Mm. For example, do you want to raise your kids in a spot with a whole bunch of crime a whole bunch of gangs, um, you know, a lot of these gangs, that's part of drug distribution from a larger entity. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you trying to raise your family in a spot where they defunded the police and it's just a bunch of fucking inner city bullshit, danger, and just drama? Or do you want to raise your kids in a safe country where maybe we put in America first and we not defunding the police? Definitely take a look at that clip of the people in Oregon from the little autonomous zone. So, Mighty Soul showed it to me, and, I, and we're like, what the fuck? It's like all these people, get out of here, to the cops and shit. Yeah. So, instantly, I'm like, damn, this is typical Portland stuff. These are some little Antifa motherfuckers that don't know how good they have it. And for whatever reason, they're not happy with their life. So, they're trying to blame it on the police, blame it on everything, blame it on the United States, blame it on like, well, United States used to have slavery. No. There's still slavery. There is still slavery. You got these people getting um, motherfucking trafficked, human trafficked. Uh, Arizona, I think, is the abduction capital of the country. Uh, Houston is the, uh, what is it, the freaking human trafficking capital. Yeah. And there's, there's indentured, indentured, uh, indentured servants, indentured servitude happening. Ed Calderon talks about it on that podcast where he says... You got these farms, like Governor Newsom, he has a winery, there's, there's a vineyard, so you need these Mexicans, <laughs> basically, right, mm-hmm. and workers, to be out there fucking with the grapes and shit in the sun and breathing in probably smoke from nearby fires, and they're essential, they're still working, but a lot of these immigrants, they cut deals with the coyote or whoever brought them, and it's like, okay, 
you don't have all the money to pay me, so you're gonna have to go work at this farm. And I got a little deal with with old boy that's over the overseeing the farm workers. You might be working at Governor Newsom's uh, winery vineyard and fuck around being indentured indentured servant. <laughs> I'm just saying. So yes, we could, you know, reparations and all that. That's another conversation for another episode. But there's still slavery going on, especially in other countries. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my point is a lot of people are spoiled and they like to blame shit on other people instead of that personal accountability. Like if you watch the clip of those Oregon people hollering at the police, we were trying to figure out what it was about. And then Mighty Souls reading the comments to get context. And somebody said, well, those people are mad because those cops came to evict a family that's been living in that house for 65 years and da 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 right? And we're like, oh, Prager posted it, but they didn't put the, that context. So now it kind of looks different, right? Because video lies. Video, sure. will, video will lie to you. <laughs> it, it's happened majorly with Covington kids, all kinds of shit, right? Some people would argue George Floyd mm-hmm. is an example, just because we don't know what happened right prior. Um so another person posted about the Oregon people. It said, um, nah, these people have an autonomous zone. Somebody said, I live right by there. These motherfuckers have their little fence and shit, like their little camp, an encampment. And the cops went over there uh, previously trying to kick them out. Well, that day, they caught them off guard. They showed up at 5.30 a.m. That's why all them ladies and shit were in their robes coming mm. about their tent in the robes. And that right after that happened, they reinforced their little border wall fence right uh, how ironic how ironic yeah. around their autonomous zone basically saying f the u.s government we can have our own little encampment and f all these people that live in portland and businesses around here that was suck i man you couldn't sorry i love portland i love voodoo donuts we have one now too um i got people out there shout out to my boy ezekiel i got a whole bunch of people out there in portland i've done events concerts all types of shit i love doing comedy over there but man, I don't know how I could live with a whole bunch of Antifa tearing shit up. I can never open up a brick and mortar. I can never open up a taqueria or especially not made out of glass or fuck around, put it in the wrong section where they come spray paint your shit or something happens on TV in another city. Now they tearing your shit up. Or there's a there's a, a plague come from, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you know where it came from. <laughs> and now they shutting you down. Dude, that reminds me. Somebody uh, sent this to me on a dm that you did you know that uh, your boy george lopez is opening a bakery how's that my, I, didn't, I don't know him like that i don't know him. <laughs> i know you don't know him like that somebody's boy uh-huh <laughs> i don't gonna, know i know it's just a phrase it's just, just like yeah, i got you go ahead no it's it's called uh chingon bakery mm. uh and it for, somebody sent me a meme where somebody put you know it was i think it was them in front of the the glass or whatever like coming soon it's like mm. be a shame if some antifa riders came and <laughs> destroyed these windows Nice bakery you have there. Yeah. Be a shame if somebody <laughs> broke all the windows and stole your shit. Where, what city did he post up at? Uh, I'd have to find out because it must have been, I mean, let me see. Is it like California or Vegas? Oxnard? Oh, it's in Oxnard. I think so, yeah. Really? You know, uh, what, you know what's... Statham Boulevard, Oxnard? You know what's funny? What? Is that I know somebody in the bakery business in Oxnard. Oh, yeah, really? I wonder if they say, hey, man, could we just license your name and just slap it on top? I don't know. Mm. That'd be smart if they did, if that's what it was. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that he just licensed his name, only because he ain't got time to be baking bread and No, shit. of course not. The official bakery, official IG of George Lopez, Chingon Bakery. Uh, the logo, when I glance at it, looks like the Pringles guy, does it not? Oh, I thought he was going to say Danny Trejo. Let me see. <laughs> Can you see it? Ah, cabron. Oh, okay. Or what is it? It kind of, that's, that's weird. That's very weird. Uh, it reminds me of the uh, chips, Sabritas. Okay. Like Here, let me pull it I up. I guess that's why I thought Pringles. I mean, it had to be chips. Like, let me find out Pringles is fucking up uh, some some other Latin company I didn't even know about. Sabritas? I think it is. Hold on. Is it Sabritas? Si, sí, wey. Espérate. El pinche wifi no sirve. Oh, pues, eh, pues estamos atrás de la casa. Uh, Patreons. Um, <laughs> all the patrons right now, you guys were down, were down with us uh, when we were still in the garage. Mira, we. Oh, yeah. Those are good chips. It literally... Why wow, it looks exactly like it. Yeah, it literally looks... Yeah. Like the same. 
Interesting. Even the hair, even like the little swirl around the hair. Yeah, right. Which is weird because this is chips and his stuff is bread. But uh, hey, more power to you. Yeah, um, man. Good but, luck. And, and you're doing it in California, which is interesting. That's why I brought it up. Which is interesting because, I mean, from what I hear, it's very hard. There's so much compliance and regulation and loopholes and tax and stuff that makes it hard. Yeah, that PragerU video I mentioned or I referred to in the last episode was, you know, people fleeing California for Texas because of mostly that. Like all the regulation to do anything, open a body shop, open up a fucking restaurant. I saw that. It's balls of the wall. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, regulations about like minimum wage type stuff or? Uh, I don't know if minimum wage is on that particular video yet, but I know it's insurance for like. Yep. Like if you have a waiter on staff, mm-hmm. like you have to pay a shit ton of money to insure everybody. Yeah. And I know everyone listening is like, well, Chingo, you want to insure your Of people. course, yeah. Of course. You want, you want to work for a good company that takes care of their people that can afford to do that shit. But if you're a little guy trying to come up himself mm-hmm. and you're you're just one body shop or one fucking pizza shop and you're not costco it, it might force you to not be able to open and not be able to conduct any business so now you ain't giving nobody no jobs yeah and just like here too it might and it make you not hire somebody for full time like there'd be a full time uh, a part time employee sorry they can't get 40 hours because they can't pay for the benefits or whatever the fuck and there's a lot to it I don't know. It's it's a fucking and a sticky situation because we all want the best for people, but there there's a process to like get to the point where you can take care of everybody, but you got to take care of yourself first. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's a fine balance between like, you know, tax the rich, yeah. you know, and like just tax everybody. Um, if you make if you make over four hundred thousand, I've heard that debunked. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like I think it was Candace Owens and she was quoting Thomas Sowell. And like the other economists, I think it's in her book, Blacked Out. Okay. But basically she's saying like the way the left or I guess Democrat, I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck the shit is no more. Because I know liberal is different than leftist. Which is different from a progressive, but yeah. Fuck, I don't know. But it's, to me it's all mixed yeah. in a way. I don't know. So maybe that should be my homework. Like, okay, <laughs> when I think the left, I think mainly just Democrats. Yeah. But like you just finished saying, well, some are progressive. I was like, okay, what does that mean exactly? Uh, and then you have, well, democratic socialists too. Uta madre. Right, which I, you know, I made that clip referring to we're talking about you, you giving your dad kind of the red pill. Uh, and somebody, I guess, tweeted something like, do you, do you stand for democratic socialism? Like, bitch, you're not listening to the clip. Maybe they looked at the graphics. I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, lazy. I didn't know what DSM was. Yeah, is that Democrat? uh, Democratic Socialists of America, DSA. Oh, DSA. Yeah. Um, it's this group that, you know, that I guess AOC speaks at or is a part of maybe that they're just pushing for Really? These. Yeah. So she's be, she speaks at Socialists. Oh, yeah. Her and Bernie are like, the, they're waving those flags. They're the ones that are like the Democratic Socialists trying to push all that stuff in Congress. And they're also on Biden's squad, right? Yeah. They're like around him sure. uh, advising or different departments. So every time I say stuff like, beware of socialism, blah, 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 the, people jump on me. What has Biden said or done that socialist? And it's like, well, he got Bernie and AOC over there, and they speak at the DSA. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. Uh, did you leave here? What time do you have to bounce? What time are you leaving? Um, I, here in a minute. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. But I did want to play this, because mm-hmm. I know Shingo's got to hit the road. Did you see the uh, Detroit lawmaker that, that did that uh, Facebook video or threatening Trumpers? No? All uh, right. It's a Detroit what? She's a, she's a representative. She's a, sits on the, she sits on a GOP committee of, mm-hmm. that makes laws in First, Detroit. Okay. A uh, 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 who committee? Uh, a, a Republican. A GOP. Oh, she's, she's Republican? No, she's Democrat, but she sits on a, she's a Democratic oh. representative on a board of majority Republicans. And she says Trumper, yeah, which so I don't like that name. What does that mean? It's dumb, but check this out. This is, you're going to love this. Let's play. Can we play it? So this is just a warning to you Trumpers. Be careful. Walk lightly. We ain't playing with you. Enough of the shenanigans. Enough is enough. And for those of you who are soldiers, you know how to do it. Mm. Do it right. Be in order. Make them pay. Jesus. I love (laughs) y'all. 
Puta madre. Be in order. Make them pay. You know what to do. Okay, so did somebody troll you and you got upset and you hopped on the, on the fucking social media? Well, you remember this clip where she was, there was a, a hearing where they were talking about, you know, fraud or whatever. And she was yell, she was basically like yelling at everybody like, you only got one Detroiter in here. Did you see this clip where she's wearing this no. fucking glasses on top of her head like Whoopi Goldberg and has this blue little fucking scarf thing on? This is from last week uh, where she's like, we're, we're you know, whatever, we're, we, we didn't, aren't listening to everything. And the guy was like, look, this hearing is specifically for people that witnessed voter fraud mm. or irregularities or whatever. But that, that kind of went viral last week. And then she apparently was getting a bunch of threats because she was being super literally out of order i don't know how many times that guy had to fucking smash mm. his mouth and be like hey you're out of order simmer the fuck down and then she came back at everybody with this she actually was punished this is this happened today so she got um as far as what it said here she was like kind of relieved of some of some duties this week following this video earlier today i mean i heard i ain't been to detroit in a long long time but i heard uh, it's pretty rough sad it's america you know you don't want to see any part of america be that uh kind of in, in shambles but a lot of places are right now yeah but you know what part isn't san antonio that's where i'm headed right after this party like a motherfucker party like a <laughs> nah, i think people are kind of scared of the rona out there <laughs> well yeah it's kind of where that well, was one of the first places i think in texas right where like lol was open and people were getting the rona at the comedy club well i think you know obviously people that still i'm not saying the news be lying all the time but they're they're doing a bar shutdown so everyone's i think kind of on edge like we have too many cases you know uh, but you're not going to a bar. too many false positives yeah <laughs> no the place that i'm at they're categorized as a restaurant but it's set up like a nightclub yeah it's basically bro they had to start selling food during all this stuff well because of tabc yeah they were gonna in order to yep, stay open and yep. all this stuff a lot of those places and if you love those places maybe you want you frequent them or your friends own them or whatever why wouldn't you want them to do that it take any measure they can to stay the fuck open you know what i need to shout them out uh Hotel Discotec is way over there on 1604 on the north side of San Antonio. They are serving food. So even though my concert will be over by the time you hear this, uh, if you're in that area, check out their food. Uh, you want to give this little B-Day shout out there? This is a very interactive uh, listener from the podcast. Hell yeah. At Voltec underscore you said B-Day shout out for my hubby today. Woo woo. Big D, Mr. Voltec. D's nuts. Señor de la O, Mr. Herrera. Whatever you want to shout would be cool, but like, dope. Keep waking up our raza, doing great. Appreciate you. Man, happy birthday, man. Uh, happy birthday, Big D, Mr. Voltec, D's Nuts, Senor de la O, Mr. Herrera. <laughs> Sass. And uh, thank you for uh, supporting the, the podcast. And Rob's been sending me some really cool, uh, you know, we, we check the DMs and shit. Or if he checks it first, he'll send me a screenshot of what yeah. they said. Thank you. And so, especially on and the Patreon, too. What was that? No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah. I just... Yeah, and the Patreon messages, too. People are just very enthusiastic and very loving, uh, which is cool. Like, they're not just so pro you talking about this. They're just very pro everybody hearing this, learning it, spreading the good message, and just kind of... Just trying to be good citizens. Yeah, because we want the best for everybody. Like we were saying earlier, do you want to raise your kids? And don't you want to be up on game in, in terms of who you're aligning with, who you're siding with, who you're voting for? Like, it, depending on the issue, if it's whether it's economy or education or a Second Amendment or whatever, uh, just look at who's who's working with who, who's aligning with what. And everything's connected, even though you might think something is, isn't a isn't a threat. Remember, anytime there's like a, a void, other things fill in. If you defund the police, that power might be gone. Some other force or entity is going to fill that power void yeah so everything's connected and uh that's all we're trying to promote man yeah so if you want to help uh, hardwire the internet and help the production of the show along with getting chingo some antacids as you were burping through that text sorry <laughs> sign up at patreon.com oh, yeah, like, happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> mr voltec <laughs> <laughs> sign up at patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and uh it'll be some fun some fun to come next week will be the final two episodes of the series and then uh, you guys are signing up at Patreon, and we're going to keep it going. I need to post that link out there more. Yeah, at for patreon. sure. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. That's all I got, man. Oh, are you going to play travels. that clip of the lady from Detroit? That was her. But what did she say? The one, oh, the, well, that was, now nah, that was another one. That was just the, her going crazy. I didn't oh, cue it okay. up. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't yeah. worry about it. All right, guys, thank you all for tuning in. Just two more episodes left, but thanks for the support. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Sass.